beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to Him and cried out, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because He was before me. From His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law, indeed, was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
continues in Romans with the discussion of hope. He says that not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. But this hope is certainly not easy. Sometimes it seems it's the first thing to go when times are rough. This is so even for the Christian. W.H. Alden wrote about the difficulty of the Christian hope. He said, To those who have seen the child, however dimly, however incredulously, the time being is, in a sense, the most trying time of all. In other words, once we have an inkling of the power and splendor and the love of God, it is hard to wait and to hope, especially in the midst of all that life throws at us. It's sort of like trying to stay on the farm once you've seen Paris. But this is the kind of resolute hope and trust that led the mystic Dame Julian of Norwich to declare in the end, that all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well. St. Paul ascribes this abiding hope to the presence of the Holy Spirit, when he says, endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So thirdly, as a result of our belief that time has a purpose and our Christian hope and trust in the Lord of all time, our tradition tells us not to spend the time we do have worrying and fretting all the time. And you may not know it, but I'm preaching to myself this morning. Our Lord himself says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? I don't think any of us have any illusions that worry can be banished from our lives entirely. It's like the old company that moves in and doesn't leave. But our tradition, our faith, does give us an antidote. Something to keep worry from consuming us. It offers us a haven to surround ourselves with the promises and hopes given to us. And lastly, I would say our tradition allows us to dream. There's a lot of naysaying in our world, plenty of gloom and despair. But as Christians, part of our very birthright is to be able to dream, to dream holy dreams. It is our birthright to dream of the future and of God's plans and purposes coming to fruition, aided partly by our meager efforts. It is our birthright to dream of the full advent of the kingdom, of a time when we will know as we are known. It is our birthright to dream of a time when we shall know war no more, when swords shall be turned into plowshares, of that time when the good and the holy shall triumph over the evil and the base. It is our birthright to dream that all our failings and sins and unfaithfulness and sloth and hatred and envy and gluttony and lust, that all these things can be forgiven, that they can be tossed overboard by our Lord himself, never to be remembered. Or, as the Bible says, removed as far as the east is from the west. And more than that, God's grace can strengthen us to live better lives, to grow in grace, so that all these evils have less power over us. These are just some of the dreams of the Christian. It is our birthright to dream of a new start, a fresh start, like a fresh morning, like a fresh year, like a fresh baby, like the Word dwelling in a fresh new way among us, like the new start we hear each time that our sins have been forgiven. And I might add, it is our birthright to dream about our community, especially our Christian community. Let me ask you this. What are your dreams for Emmanuel, Church on the Hill? 
must have a vision. We must have a vision beyond the status quo. All these parts of our faith, the belief that time has a purpose, the living in hope, seeking by God's grace to avoid worry and remembering to dream, teach us how to live year after year. I once saw a slogan on a calendar leaf that said, take care of the minutes and the hours and the years will take care of themselves. That reminds me that our Christian faith, day in and day out, is our best and final hope. Our best way of dealing with the hours and the minutes and all the passages and seasons of our lives. St. Augustine urges us to trust the past to God's forgiveness, the present, the present to His mercy, and the future to His providence. So with all these things in mind, allow me now to wish you a Merry Christmas.